I'm like, Tyler. Yeah, Tyler. I didn't know you went in there. <laughs> How long you been in there? <laughs> That's so oh, fucking man. funny. Oh, we rolling Stop. already, though. We're rolling. So we're here. Yeah, we rolling. Welcome back to another episode. Uh, we, we're just banging out episodes left <laughs> and right, man. Uh, the next few after this one, too, is bangers. The ones before this were bangers. Um, super excited. Um, how are you feeling, Mo? I'm feeling great. I'm very excited for this guest. Yeah. I think this is going to be the most chillest I've been on an episode. And, no, this is also the first guest I believe that knows everybody from Garage Sessions. This is yeah. true. I've met everybody before. Before. Yeah. <laughs> so you've worked with us before. But without further ado, this is my brother. This is the guy that has done everything for me. Uh, when it comes to film and all my knowledge and all the opportunities, if you see my Instagram, if it wasn't for this man, I would not be where I am today with film. But we have Luciano Picasso in the motherfucking Thank garage. You for having me. It's about time. Yeah. My boy. <laughs> Seriously, bro. Seriously. Oh, we missed all that. We got to be here. Come on, man. There we go. There we go. But <laughs> yeah, man, this is, this is, this is no. my guy. Thanks then, for having me, guys. No, bro. This I is, mean... This is the, you said this is like the chillest episode because it's me, but I'm nervous, yo. No, <laughs> this is my first podcast ever, so I'm happy that it's with you guys. You know, oh, this is, for this sure, is cool. bro. And and then so. you were also one of the few people that knew about this idea before it happened. I, yes. I talked about it a little bit before we we came live, and uh, you know, you were always a guest in mind. So you're here Dude, now. I'm stoked to see it come to fruition, and like yeah. you guys are pro, dude. This is awesome. Like I walked in here, and this is like. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Hell I'm, yeah, proud. I'm proud that you guys are doing it. Hell a lot yeah, of people say it, they, they want to do things, but the people who actually do it, for real. Like I commend you for that. So yeah. I'm, I'm proud and I'm happy to be here, to finally yeah. be here. Episode 20. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Is this 20? I think so. Fire. I Might be so. wrong. Fire. But 20. I right? think 20 that we filmed coming out wise. Well, August. they'll already see the other oh, ones coming oh, out. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But filming wise, the 20th episode. That's crazy, indeed. man. Um, but how have you been lately? What's. Just how you been? What you been do good, today, man? Uh, today, uh, today was prepping for this, man. I got up. <laughs> he said his lines. I was, I, like I said, I was nervous. I woke up with the Looking in the palms. mirror, practicing his lines. <laughs> yeah, I took a shower. I made sure my mustache was clean. Yeah. Up. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta no, but I, I've been, it's been good. Um, I'm in a, I'm in the process of moving and renovating a house. So yeah, that's kind of been eating up my time versus also you know maintaining production and mm-hmm. keeping the boys busy and. Mm-hmm. Making sure we're uh, we're on top of our game, but yeah. I'm happy that you know we made time for this, and oh yeah, I'm stoked. So yeah, this has been my day because I I was nervous since last night. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, yeah. so for history, so for people that don't know, I've known this man over ten years for sure, over ten years. Um, you were a dancer first. Yes, I know you through the wow, dance. I world. forgot that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Started with so dance, man. You were a dancer first. Became a. Uh, legendary filmmaker that you are now but how did uh how did dance come into your life first how did that <laughs> all come around how did that start so yeah dance was the 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 passion the drive that you know i i always dreamed that i wanted to become a, a mm-hmm. background dancer i wanted to be a music video so that was kind of the dream yeah. i think i met this is what i think let's put a date on it i think i was like nine ten years old so this is back in what 2000 oh 2000, okay. I would say 2000, I'm, I'm 26 now. 26, so five years older than us, so 90, oh, that's when you 90, were born. 90, whoa. That's when you, I'm, so yeah, I'm bad born. at math, so we're just going to say that's a long what I time said. ago. See, <laughs> I have a fellow guy here that, I said that like last episode. 04, yeah. 05. That's crazy. But yeah, so I'll talk a little bit on passion and stuff. So I started off with dancing and, you know, it started off actually with tap dance. Um, really? I saw, yeah, I it, it started that. there. I saw something on TV when I was seven years old. And I asked my mom, I was like, what is that? I've never seen that before. <laughs> like, they're, like, making noises with their shoes. Mm-hmm. And um, at that point on, I was so young. My mom was like, yo, let's dance. Are you interested in it? And she put me in a class. It's That's how Whoa. it started. Just like that. Just like that. And I, I, I kind of fell in love with it. And, you know, being one of the only male dancers, especially back then, yeah, like, you see a lot more now, which I'm, like, stoked to see. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. Back then, you didn't see a lot of uh, dudes in, like, dance studios. Mm-hmm. So, of course, when I showed up there, everyone wanted me in everyone's class. So, I, <laughs> yeah, I ended up yeah, doing yeah, yeah. tap, jazz, ballet, contemporary. That's crazy. And yeah. then, you know, a couple years passed, and I discovered, uh, like, hip-hop and breakdancing. And then I uh, made my way over to this studio called LEDC, which is in Cyprus. Mm-hmm. It's where I think I met you. 
I don't, even I don't know if it was actually at the studio, but that's where I think a lot of the foundations of who I like am now started at that studio. Oh, shit. It's where I met the one and only Ricky Cole. Hey. Shout out to oh, Ricky Cole. Shout out to Ricky Cole. We'll talk more on Ricky Cole. Oh, uh, yeah, he's yeah. a big, 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 big influence and mentor. Oh, yeah, we of talked. Me. We talked about you a little bit already on the Ricky Cole episode. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's history. Yeah, man. So yeah, it started there, and then oh, through that, true. like I started doing more hip hop and break dancing and mm-hmm. um, I started dealing with insecurities cause I was starting to get really tall. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah. like to kind of touch on it, Ricky actually was the first person who kind of uh, guided me through that. Cause I think I was around 10 years old, 10, 11 years old when I met Ricky. Okay. Um, so like I was literally in that transitional phase of becoming a teen and mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm you know, really exploring myself and seeing what I was interested in and Mm -hmm. finding out what I was passionate about. And he started a crew called Soul Fresh. I'm pretty sure you guys all know about Soul Fresh. Soul Fresh fam. And um, through that process, I'll kind of fast forward a little bit. Um, Basically, you know, Ricky's whole motive was, you know, what doing something that keeps your soul fresh. Mm -hmm. And like, that was dance. And like, I loved the, 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 the team aspect of being with like-minded individuals and like, you know, being motivated to do whatever it might be to do a show, like do a performance. And like, I think a lot of what Ricky taught me in terms of even personality, like being charismatic and, you know, changing the vibe of a room is I think really what I learned from Ricky. And like, I think that's why I think I tie a lot of what my success in film and video comes from dance Because a lot of the connections I've made were actually through dance and like Ricky being one of them and really guiding me and creating that, that, like I said, that, that care, that charismatic attitude and, you know, you know, being able to talk to everybody, making everyone feel included and welcome. I think that is huge. That was a huge foundation of how I, who I am, Yeah, yeah, Yeah. you know, and that's not even related to dance, but like it came from dance. And so like, I Mm -hmm. always pay homage to dancers in general and I think through time like the film stuff started coming in because I was dancing all the time and there was a need for video there wasn't really anyone around us really yeah. shooting a lot of video yeah. and like that was a time when like everyone was posting like YouTube videos this is before Instagram was like becoming like a crazy thing yeah and so I was like uh in between things and I think um Ricky always just gave me opportunity to shoot dance Mm-hmm. like yeah. another like another big thing it was like it was just it was just for fun at the time you yeah, know yeah. like um, yeah let's just let's just shoot the class footage at the end and i'll put together a little edit yeah 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 and then fast forward it like it turned into so much like i've created some of my my very first concept videos that were required more of like an editing thing with ricky like mm. alter ego mm. check that check that remember mm. that video mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. but yeah no I, I i i pay a lot of my my respect to you, Ricky. Shout out to you. I know you're watching this. <laughs> oh, yeah, my God. <laughs> but, like, um, it's hard to wrap into words. It's so hard to talk about things. But um, that I, I hold close to me, and I think that's a big foundation of who I am and learning those, those, those personality things have kind of carried me into video and film. And that's a whole other topic and how that kind of started. That's, yeah, that's what we were saying. I think with Ricky's episodes, your, your story from top from beginning to now is, like, so crazy how it evolved and like what in it evolved and everything so it's like it's a roller coaster it's a roller coaster like you're making me go back to memory lane <laughs> i think i think it's funny because now that i'm sitting here and i'm thinking about it i'm learning now to kind of like take a seat mm. and actually reflect yeah you've I been on the go the past 10 years seven, ten, ten 10 years i think i just been go mode Mm-hmm. Like I haven't really sat down and like, oh, what did I really do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what yeah. have I been up and I th- to? I've you been know? with like, you for the the past five years. Yes. Filming. So, so like, not all the jobs, but, but I've yeah, seen so you. I've seen you on the go and like. And yo, like, this is another big thing. Dylan actually was one of my number one supporters back in the day. Of course. Like. When I'm, like, making the transition from a hobby to actually trying to make a living from it and, like, actually trying to make money from it and, like, that when when the mindset changed from, okay, this is a hobby to, okay, let's make this a thing. I don't want to do anything else but this, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You supported me, bro. Of course. You hit me up, like, at least once a month. 
I had a concept video. For yeah. yeah. He paid me for he it. Knew, he, he paid me for it. You I was knew like, you were going to yes. have a check every month. <laughs> I was like, good. Like, you made it feel possible. You mm. know, like, I think, mm. you know, like, supporting your friends and, like, supporting the people who are actually wanting to develop an art. Like, yeah. I like I respect that and I thank mm. you for giving me that step too five years ago. No, seriously. You know, and like and then like being also like I got very lucky that I um in high school I started making videos too and I was like the guy in high school who the did everyone's guy. projects. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, everyone's I did all the video fine. projects, yeah, yeah, like yeah. you know, when you have like art based projects where you the have to do project. the writing and then you have to make like some kind of like either a video or an art, like a painting, yeah. whatever. So everyone partnered with me, but I I was smart. They did all the writing, and I did the video. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but they were but, smart to go to you because yeah, the video. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think I was just surrounded by a lot of people who respected what I was doing, even when there wasn't you know any like big. I wasn't accom- I didn't accomplish anything yet, mm-hmm. but I was driven enough to always want to do it. And, and like, you were good. I think it. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think, so I think this is what, okay, this is what I want to say. So I think a lot of it is you have to be 50% good. You have to be, you have to hold your own. Like, yeah. you do. You yeah. have to be somewhat, you have to, there but that takes some sort of that quality. That takes time. Yeah, there, has yeah. quality, there has to be quality. Yeah. There has to be quality. There has to be talent. And that's the hours that you put behind it. Those yeah. are the countless hours you don't sleep. Like, yeah. When I was younger, I started this when I was 15 years old. I remember I wasn't sleeping a lot. I barely made it to first period because I'd be up to like four or five in the morning editing. Jesus. Like that was the grind. Mm -hmm. And like it was go to Soul Fresh rehearsal, (laughs) go to Offspring on Sundays. I forgot you had Offspring. Remember Offspring too. And then I would be editing during the week after school or like editing all the 40 dance videos we did for Soul Fresh choreo projects. Mm -hmm, Like mm -hmm. so my life became school in the day and then editing all night, and then learning the programs. I think a lot of people forget about that. It's like, you have yeah. to take, it takes a couple months to years to be like, oh, I know how to, like, really edit this and Bit not bean, think about boom, it. Know all the buttons. Yeah, like, know where the buttons are, all the shortcuts, yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that that kind of motivated me. I don't know where I was going now. I'm losing train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> it happens all but, the time. Um, yeah, I think what I was saying that with the high school things, I had, um, I had, a lot of people who supported me, shout out to Miss Itzen, mm-hmm. who uh, she was the uh, activities director, uh, ASB director at the time at Millican, and she saw talent in me, and she basically helped motivate me to make all the videos for Millican. So I did, like, a sports video. I did yeah. all the proms, the formals, and, like, the senior, the senior videos. Video. And I think that was also a pinnacle moment where I was like, whoa, like, and she – like was compensating me for it like or like doing a trade where i'm able to feel like my work was valued in a way and i wasn't just doing everything for free Mm -hmm. and so i think that also like catapulted me after when i did graduate that look there's opportunity everywhere you just gotta you gotta like people gotta see they gotta see the hustle in you yeah you gotta i think like you know what you could tell when someone's really about it and when they're not yeah yeah like you can feel it okay they really want it like i'm gonna give them a shot that's Mm -hmm. how i am at least like Mm -hmm. when i see someone who's really hungry and passionate like yo like i see like potential and the potential sometimes is it outpowers the the talent the talent and talent will come like i invest in people's potential and then when you grow like dylan now has been working with me for Five years, I think. Five years? And, like, the past the two years, I think, were, like, the real, like, where we started getting grind, more crazy. clients where, like, you have pressure. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah, pressure yeah. is another big thing. I felt that pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit was crazy. Like, so Especially being under your name, though, because, like, people, obviously, like, you were getting jobs because of your work, and then you were grace, gratefully giving me and then our par- my partner, Jack, the opportunity. So, like, the pressure is there. And I think, like, me wanting to do that, too, is... You know, like, you could do everything by yourself, but it's not fun. I think I realized, like, in that process that, oh, I don't want to just be doing this by myself. Like, I do want a crew. I do see the future of of what I'm doing with people. Like, I don't want to be just the solo artist who just lives in his cave and edits by himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then goes, you know, like, I see, I I like being around people, and I like being the sense of community and, like, building something from that. Yeah. I think that's building really important something too. together. Yeah. yeah, I think my first job with you was the senior video Milliken. See, there you go. That's crazy. It's that's crazy, and it's crazy that I like that's that's I feel like that's the biggest thing I took away from going to school. Like, mm. 
it gave us opportunity to actually learn by doing. That's the thing I've been saying. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I, always give, I always give you credit every time I say that. You did. I swear to God, you just did it. I did it, right? I like, always give my man credit, learn by doing. That's literally it. Because for me, I, I hate, I can't learn just by papers and watching Someone shit. talking, telling talking you. Talking and yeah. telling me, even though they haven't even done the work themselves. It's like, how are you credible? Like, 100%. You know what I mean? And I think, like, that's the biggest thing. Like, people go to film school or... I'm like, I, I was on the route to go to film school. Yeah, sa- yeah. Like, same. I was like... I knew that I wanted to do video. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll take the route to go to college and, and, like, do the film school thing. And then I realized, like, I'm already doing it in high school. I'm doing all these dance videos. Like, five dance videos a week sometimes. Yeah. Like, what is what am I going to do for school? You know? And I think... Like, we learned, you learned, I think, a lot by just doing those senior videos. Senior videos, and yeah. then I started doing a lot of dance videos. And then you started picking up the camera, shooting yeah. your own dance videos. Yeah, like, so. And that's that's the power of learning by doing, and I think you, you yeah, it's the most beneficial thing. It's like, you keep messing up, you keep failing. One time, you're gonna, not going to fail, and you're like, yes, and then you mm-hmm. hold on to that confidence, mm-hmm. and you let that ride into the next video, and your next video, and then you start... You know, it starts, and that's where I lose. That's where my mind goes in a blur. Yeah. I'm a workaholic. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know what I did anymore. <laughs> <For real. laughs> but, Seriously. Shit. Yeah. What, what, what was the first uh, uh, major, because we already talked about, like, how the beginning we did dance videos, we did the senior videos. Yeah. What was the, I might know this answer, but for the people, what was the first, like, major gig you got? With a company, for an artist, for a brand that you're like, holy shit, this is next level compared to what we've been do- like, you've been doing. Okay, so after high school, uh, I decided actually. So I have a lot of family who lives in Europe. Mm, yep. My parents are. My mom is from Holland, and my dad's from France, Spanish, Dutch. Mm-hmm. My whole Cur- yeah, thing, yeah, you know, yeah. craziness. <laughs> so I got a lot of family that's basically living cool, out here. That's I got why he like got the cool name, Luciano <laughs> Picasso. <laughs> so I was blessed to have so much family out in Europe that yeah. after high school, uh, instead of going to college, I took a year to travel. Yeah. So I went and lived in uh, Holland and France for about a year. Mm. So I stayed out. I didn't have a return ticket, and I stayed out there in pursuit of finding – I, you know, I just did all the senior video, right? Yeah, I, I yeah, kind of yeah. started there, and, like, there wasn't any more direction anymore. Like, yeah. there wasn't someone hitting me up to do a job. Yeah. So there was a gap period where I was like, whoo, okay, do I keep doing the dance video thing, or do I leave and figure it out? Mm-hmm. And so I actually left to Europe, um, and it started off with World of Dance. So mm-hmm. if you remember that, mm-hmm. World of Dance, I mean, obviously, they're worldwide, but Ricky was actually uh, the host for World of Dance Holland. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So what an, what an obscure, like, specific place for Ricky right? to and be Right, and I was at. like, Ricky yeah. is in Holland? Yeah, exactly. What? <laughs> so organically, of course, like, me and Ricky obviously are boys at this point. Yeah, he's like, yeah. yo, like, come through. Uh-huh. Maybe we can get you in. Maybe you can shoot front row. Like, at, I think they still do front row. Yeah, where yeah, we yeah. shoot with the camera on the stage and you do the, yeah, yeah. you shoot the, the whole show, basically. So I ended up getting that. So wow. I went and shot front row. Uh, in Holland for the first time and made connections and met people. And I was lucky enough to shoot also World of Dance London. And then um, I did a couple other smaller shows in the same city or whatever. And I think that was the beginning. And Mm -hmm. then I started making dance videos for people out in Holland. So I was like, all right, the dance thing is is, still still here. here." So like I did World of Dance and then I met some dancers in the community where I made them like little concept videos and like made a little money that way. And then what really changed for me was actually when I went to Paris. Uh, this was the time where I'd, I had my cousins who lived there, but they're all very busy, and I had a lot of alone time. Mm-hmm. So there was a moment where I honestly was a little kind of depressed. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it was. I mean, I'm in Paris. Why are you depressed? You're in the yeah. middle of Paris. <laughs> But, like, I was alone. Like, you know how you have a lonely phase? Like, yeah. Oh, me and Brandon. You know what I mean? Like, we literally just talked about this, like, off camera, like, five seconds, yeah, like, like, five <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> okay. So, like, like you can kind of relate. Like, everyone has a moment where, like, you know, you can have so much cool things around you, but you still don't feel like, what's my purpose? Like, yeah, what am I doing? You big know? time. Big time. So, I was out in Paris, and uh, I had the camera. It was me and the camera. And so, I literally just started shooting at the time, Instagram was, like, really big on, like, doing those, uh, 
uh, like travel. Maybe? No, like they do like the street photography, like like uh, oh. art of visuals, and like I don't know if any old school Instagrammers like it was like street photography and like really dope, like very clarified type of photography. Mm-hmm. Anyway. I pulled inspiration from a lot of these accounts on Instagram. This is before Instagram is the way it is now. Mm -hmm. And so I started like recreating and doing my own thing. And I started just uploading to Instagram and, and I started just posting stuff and, uh, randomly I got hit up by just by posting. I posted a photo of my hand like this. And I think there was a trend going on like that, but it didn't explode. And I got a DM from, or an email from movement watches I oh shit! This. I remember this too. I remember this. Yeah. So this is that's this the photo. beginning, beginning wow. of it all. And like also yeah, in yeah, tandem yeah. with movement watches, big shout out to George, Mister Vision, because he also reached out to me and he sent me a whole box of Vision clothing at the oh, same yeah, time. Yeah, 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 so yeah, I had cool. watches and clothes in the out of nowhere, thin air, like because I was constantly posting, consistent. And, like, people were noticing that I was out there shooting photos, and, like, they liked it. And next thing you know, Movement sent me a couple watches, and they paid me. Thank you. (laughs) 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 Like, I think that gave me, like, the confidence, like, whoa, like, companies hit me up. Mm -hmm. I just got a whole box of free clothes and watches like yeah. and you got money this is what i got to do yeah 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 you know and i think that kind of like took me out of that that phase of like i told you i was kind of depressed in paris for like maybe like 4 or 5 months mm-hmm. in i was like just shooting and i went to french school for a little bit to learn french mm-hmm. so it was school which i hated school yeah, yeah. So no <laughs> you I was like, yeah. but i'm in paris i got to learn french yeah, i got to yeah, do yeah, something yeah, with yeah, my yeah, life yeah. so i did that and then shoot photos and then i was literally after every day after school i was go out in the middle of the street like literally roaming around taking photos of my watch Crazy. and clothes. Like all of it was actually done on a timer on a tripod. I mean, no yeah. one was shooting me. Someone had to wear the clothes. Yeah. <laughs> Someone had, so, Someone had yeah, to so that started too. And I thought I, I started to become really particular of how I would like to shoot because there wasn't someone else shooting it for me. Yeah. So that's, so I started, is that you found your style. I found a style or I developed like I can do this by myself and I was forced to do it because now someone's expecting photos from me true yeah. so you know i think that also gives you like a push yeah a deadline so um yeah it started there and i i it kind of moved and I, I went back to holland and they sent me another like four watches Jeez. wow and like wait so how long did you shoot for movement for because i remember when we were on set for dylan's thing i was wearing a movement watch and then you were like hey i like your watch and you're like i shoot for them and i was like what are you talking <laughs> about yeah and like movement like how do you remember that conversation that's dude? that's wild <laughs> yeah. movement was like i think they exploded in a short man- amount of time yeah like yeah, they yeah, really yeah. took after the whole influencer marketing type of thing mm. but i wasn't an influencer i think i had like barely a thousand followers Mm -hmm. like at that time it was high school friends and stuff like Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i was like how the heck did they find me (laughs) out of all Mm -hmm. these people like Mm -hmm. they just took a chance and i think i did i started i think i shot for them for almost a year damn and then i started getting stale because i moved back to (laughs) i moved back here and i wasn't into these cool countries anymore (laughs) (laughs) i mean yeah i mean they took advantage over the fact that i was traveling like that's Mm -hmm. so smart on them like hey like i told them like hey i'm gonna be in holland oh great let's send you more yeah i'm gonna be here like that's how it happened like it's genius like they didn't pay for any of that they paid me to take the photos yeah but i was paying the tickets to go to all these countries yeah so like so more power to them like we gotta do more More vacation yeah Yeah. (laughs) god damn guys we need to get on top of it i think that was like the pinnacle moment Mm. if you're asking that was your question initial question was the moment that i worked with them and then i came back to the states and kind of took that drive and then one thing led to another and I to go back to what I was saying in the beginning about the 50 50 I didn't think I really touched on that fully a lot of it is personality and how you talk to people a lot of why I'm doing what I'm doing shout out Ricky Cole shout out to my parents for like instilling that in me Big because a lot of the connections I have now are actually people that I've met years ago like Kai Mm. Kai Nguyen, shout out Kai. Mm, mm. Like, I met Kai when I was, like, 7, 10 years old, too. Yeah. Through the dance community. The dance yeah. community. And then 10 years later, he hit me up for, like, a wedding when I was 17 years old. And he was, like, shocked that I was still in high school. <laughs> <laughs> and then he he gave me uh, 
the opportunity to shoot my first big, big brand, and that was ASICs. Mm. Whoa. So, like, it went from movement watches to then a couple, like, smaller Instagram brands and, uh, like, just small things where you're not getting paid like a good budget it's just like you're doing it for the exposure and like you're yeah. helping each other out of course of course um but then from there yeah it it turned into asics so thanks thank you kai and oh i didn't even touch up i met my boy steve park it's God, a big steve. part of this journey as well steve i love you steve, steve park man. has been my partner in crime for like 10 years now i met him through a friend of mine nyan I'm just name dropping all the homies. Yeah, come on. You have to, bro. But that's like you said. You like a community like that. Yeah, and you see how it's just power of connections. Yeah. And like you don't need to – a lot of people when they say you need connections, it's like it's from your parents or you have someone who knows someone really big. Yes, those are great connections. But when you're starting out, you never know what the person next to you, even if they're not somebody yet, they could be somebody. Mm -hmm. And they will give you the opportunity. Always be careful who you're talking to. Yeah, like when you're on set, talk to people. Mm -hmm. Like, I think people now are so caught up in me, 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 me. And followers, followers, followers. Yeah, like, they're trying to give this image. But, like, you just talk to people and have a good time. Make make people smile. Like, you will get a call maybe, like, five years later from that exact person. Exactly. And, like... Yeah, so Steve Park, I'm like tagging. I'm like going all over the no, place. No, but it's, it's facts, <laughs> but, though. That's why I love yeah. this podcast. But yeah, I yeah, this episode's going to be good. lit. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Steve Park, uh, we actually met in high school as well through Nyan. They mm-hmm. went a mutual friend at Cerritos High, and I went to Milliken High, and he was the video guy at Cerritos, and I was the video guy at Milliken. Mm-hmm. He's like, Nyan, like, Nyan was like, yo, you got to meet Steve. Steve, you got to meet Luciano, like, yada, yada, yada. Uh, we did a project together, and then we I got randomly hit up to do a Kickstarter mm-hmm. for this this company called Pumpkin Guts. It was like this uh, Mr. Potato Head type of <laughs> toy it. type of thing. <laughs> Love it, yep. And I'm like, I've never done anything like this before. I've never worked with Steve, and I said, Steve, you want to do this with me? Mm-hmm. From that point on, we've worked together. Wow. Since we were like what 15 year years was old. That? Oh, not 15. Uh, I was senior year of high school, so I was 17, 18, 18. years old. But right before I went to Europe. Okay. So I met him right before I went to Europe. Um, so we had a, like a year where I didn't, we didn't work together, but the connection was there. Um, but the guy who we did the video for was so impressed by us. He's like, yo, how long y'all been working together? Like you guys work so well. Like <laughs> you guys like have to be doing this for a while. I was like, no, You're this like, is actually our first project. Two hours. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's how you know. And like, I think, like, I feel like you guys have that connection, too. Like, mm-hmm. you, you, when you meet that person that's going to kind of be filling each other's shoes where it's natural, then I think you, you, you met the right person. And then we stay very loyal to each other and we grow, you know, yeah, and exactly. grow to these bigger brands. But, exactly. yeah. All right, re- reel me back in. What are we? Th- give me another question. I, w- I was going through <laughs> back memory lane too. It's like so right. crazy how everything aligns. So after, when, when did you come back from Europe? Around. So I came back in 2000. So I went out there in 2016. Yeah. I came back 2017. 2017. And then 2018, 2018 we shot. My, okay, so. And oh, that, there we yeah. go. So 20, so. Our senior year of high school. Our senior Dylan year Dylan and Jackson directed a short film. Yeah, shout out to my brother Jackson. And um, I acted yes. in it, and Lucy and Steve shot it. You were See, now we're rapping in Steve yeah. Park. Now we yeah, can put so that together. Yeah, so now, that's the first time I met Steve, too. Yes. Not the, oh, really? I mean, first time. Working with working Steve, Working with maybe. Steve. Um, but yeah, that, uh, that was the first time I met Luciano and Steve. Yeah. So yeah. that nice. was 2018. You were my DP. And I think after, after we filmed that, fi- uh, the short film, go watch the short film also. Uh, we went to Catalina yeah. together. Remember Catalina? Yes. Catalina that was Festival. a cool experience. Yeah. First time on the red carpet. Yeah. <laughs> carpet everything. That was fun. And I think with that, working with you and seeing how you work and then I think maybe vice versa you seeing how I work after that. And after I graduated, is right when I started working with you. After yes. I graduated, I was, like, with you, like, almost every day. I remember I got a call from Dylan. <laughs> I got a call from Dylan. He was like, yo, Luce, I'm going to work with you. <laughs> I like what you're doing. I don't want to go and do all this other route. I don't want to go to college and do the whole film thing. I Like, I want to do what you're doing. I'm like, you know what, Dylan? Come on over, bro. <laughs> so <laughs> after that, go. I remember that phone call. Yeah, I That's remember what you asked like, me. I've been ups and downs. Like, we've been through fights, too. Like, we've been through ups and downs. Ups and downs. It's how it goes. Like, literally, I've been through everything with this man. But, like, after that phone call, 
like it's always been like day one, like bro. And then I've been through the the four a.m. to five like five a.m. and we woke up like the a couple grind. hours later. Like it was crazy. The senior the video, the first senior video I yeah, did with man. you, that was nutty. Like I have twenty. We did a twenty minute video for senior. If you want to check that out, link is right there. Yeah, link, <laughs> <laughs> just link is in the description. <laughs> and Back from two thousand. What? What year was that? Dude, that's 20, 2019. 2018, Yeah, nineteen. Because that's when I met you know who, and then you know, that yep. is fucking. That is crazy. crazy. After that too, like that's that's when I was like, I, that's when I like felt the career of filmmaking like. It's <laughs> good and like. What were you saying? What? <laughs> I was, I was what? Yeah. <laughs> when you started doing video, did you want it? Like, you're like, I want to do narrative. I want to do music videos. Did you have something you wanted to do specifically? <clears throat> uh, for the longest time, it was music videos. Mm -hmm. Like, because I naturally came from dance. Yeah. I was like, all right. Music. I'll do some music stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I think because of the movement watch thing, it turned more into product. Uh, commercial. Commercial style content. Because yeah. I remember you also yeah. showed me the halal guys ad that you did also while we were shooting mm. your thing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think naturally it moved into more, uh, social stuff mm -hmm. like, well now it's all social media, but the yeah. time was just like short form commercial content. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, I feel like I'm still kind of in that discovery mode yeah. of exactly what I want to be creating. I think what I want to be creating now is, is just a, it's kind of like a collective, a, a hub of, of working with people and like becoming that production house that does everything. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, I'm open to every opportunity. Like if someone wants to shoot a movie and I love the movie, I'll do it. I'll take the chance. I'll like, talking, I'll do it, uh, you know? Uh, um, but music video, regardless, like mm. I'm open to anything <laughs> creative. We're talking about that. Uh, we'll talk to you yeah. after <laughs> this, but, uh, you know, we already announced we're working on a short film. Oh, or, you announced it already. Or technically a feature film because Brandon is writing and it's like over 60 pages. <laughs> Brandon oh. doesn't know how to stop writing pages. Yeah, Brandon doesn't know how to stop writing pages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we already announced that Love Garage it. Sessions is writing our first movie and, you know, um, you know, we could be in the talks about, you know, DP. We'll talk to you after. <laughs> well, look. Coming to fruition right here. Yeah, right here on the pod. But I love it. The, my movie, was, was that like the first like movie? So yeah, you kind of brought the whole narrative, narrative thing. To the, and that's crazy how well that video did on YouTube. Crazy. Wild. A couple hundred K. Like, yeah, the, Brandon showed it to me like a couple of weeks ago. Like the view count. I was like. It's well, kind of wild my, my, my so off my the way My sophomore did. year one. Max Jekowitz. The Max. Wait, didn't you film that one too? Love Unexpected? That's what I'm talking about. Like oh, I, was, I was talking views. about his, the senior project one. The no. one we did with, uh, yeah, okay. the one with yeah. you. No, yes. but Max Jekowitz has I, like yeah. 10 million Oh, or so you've done two movies with I me. I did two with you. Yeah, yeah, so he's done my sophomore year one, which I was, a r that was, if you watch that movie, that's horrible writing. It has like 10 million <laughs> views. But Dude, uh, it got it so, it did so well, man. But that's what I'm, it's like, it, that was out of nowhere. I just posted that bitch and it just... <laughs> Just let it go. Let it rock. Yo, no, that's what it is. Huh? 10 mil. 10 mil. That's 10 million views right now. Six years ago? She. Wow. That's wild. That's wild. But yeah, dude, that was the, the first time I kind of explored, even with you. And that was a good time. That was yeah, such a fun those, yeah. such I a think that's time. where I started really liking it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, other than that, I haven't done anything story-based like that mm -hmm. or narrative-based. I feel um, like also it's just you're, you're so fucking busy, bro. I mean, I think, like I said, like I'm on like autopilot, dude. I'm a workaholic. Mm -hmm. I'm learning now to. Uh, there's more than there's more to life than just working all the time, you know. I'm talking about life, like <laughs> Let, let's drop a little something. More than life, you are an engaged man. Woo! Engaged man. You are an engaged yes. man. <laughs> you put I think that you put a ring on that. I did put a ring yeah. on that. <laughs> put a ring on that. Shout that out thing. Taylor. Hey Taylor. Love you. Shout out to Taylor. <laughs> but yeah, I think that kind of like good segue, like. I think, you know, move, I'm moving into this next chapter of my life. Mm -hmm. And, like, I know, like, I value uh, I value family and I value friendship and I value that part of our life as well. And I think being working the way I have been with video the past 10 years, it's like, oh, I can't lose sight of that. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm ready for this. And I met my dream girl. Wow. You know, and, like, well. you, don't let those, you don't let them run away. You don't. You kind of, like... If you want this, you Homies do it now. Life is dreams. short. Bro, uh. stop making me jealous. <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just timing kidding. is key, no, bro. Timing the timing is, is key. No, but I'm so happy for you too, man. Thank you, man. I've been, I was there since the beginning when you guys got together. You're right. You're right. Yeah. He, well, yeah, well At, 
Yeah, when we rekindled. So rekindle. Okay, okay, real. Okay, let's let's, let's go. Let's go brief the story, story of what it is. All right. Uh, <laughs> so I met Taylor okay. actually when I was uh, ten years old. What? Yes. Crazy. It's crazy. I think all my pinnacle moments in life is at ten years old. Yeah. <laughs> well, you were busy at ten. I was busy at ten years old, man. That's but so no, I met her actually uh, through dance. Um, I was at ten years old. Yeah, I thought I was it was 10. high school. No, well, we rekindled in high school Damn. slightly, and then rekindled again, and then like said, nah. I said, nah. I said, I want no girlfriend in high yeah, school, yeah, and yeah. then we ten years later again. That's so like, crazy. I think that was meant wow. to be, right? Wait, so ten years old. At ten years old. Uh, uh, I was at LEDC. Okay. Right. I was dancing a lot and uh, she was dancing in another studio. She did like a ballroom and like uh, cotillion type of style, like ballroom salsa, all those kind of things. And uh, there was an opportunity to shoot some music video mm -hmm. uh, for some. I don't exactly know what it was. It was from some other studio. And she was one of the girls uh, that was part of the video. It was like a total of uh, five people total. And they had a couple girls and they needed guys. Mm. So they shopped around all these dance studios looking for guys. Cause at the time there wasn't a lot of dudes yeah, at the yeah, studio. Yeah, yeah. So they found me and another guy at the LEDC and uh, we got partnered up. Oh, I didn't hear it. This is a funny story. <laughs> she, <laughs> so this was a salsa thing. So we had to be obviously dancing partners, partners. and I didn't get partnered up with her. Oh, uh, you, you got, I her. got the other girl. I got her a little you got bit her because a little bit. not gonna lie. I had a little crush on her. I was 10 year old, had a little crush. I was <laughs> like, I like this girl, yeah, yeah, yeah. but she's not my partner. And she didn't give me no light of day. Oh, <laughs> that's the worst. You too. know what I mean? Like, so we did all these rehearsals for a few weeks yeah. and then we did the recording of mm -hmm. the, that, that thing that we did. And mm -hmm. that was the last time I saw her. Oh, so that, like, that, that was, was that. it. That yeah. was that. But like, I rem but the but funny part is I do remember liking her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the and the crazy part is my mom actually brought some photos out from, from that, that time and there's a photo of us like isn't that wild wow. and there's probably a video living somewhere too. Yeah, I was gonna say where's that video I gotta find the video where's that video so then fast forward now we're in high school not knowing that like so she lived in Cyprus I lived in Long Beach so I was, I'm not gonna see this girl anymore she is at Millican High School and I'm Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, now, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. because now I, I was dancing a lot, again, being one of the only dancers, like, I knew some of the choreographers at Millican, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so I naturally got forced into the dance, yeah, <laughs> the dance stuff, the yeah, dance yeah. department at Millican, and I, of course, I loved it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I kept passing her, and I was like, I know this chick. Yeah. <laughs> like. Oh, shit. So yeah, like, I, okay, like, okay. I knew, I was like, I know who this is. Where do I know her from? Mm -hmm. And then we, I, I went up to her, I was like, and I, it clicked for me. I was like, do you remember doing this, like, music video thing? Oh, like, shit. back when we were, like, 10 years old? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Like, I was the guy with the swooshy hair. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she's like, no way. That's and, like, crazy. the girl also, that was my partner, was also went to the kids. So oh, they, like, shit. Wow. it was just, like, kind of a surreal moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, like, and so from that on, we had, like, a little thing. Like, we all end up, like, hooking up at like, parties on the weekend. Yeah, come so. on. There's yeah. a lot of house parties. I don't think house parties happen the way oh, they do bro. anymore. It's more of that boring, annoying social media parties. Yeah. You know how it is. But back then, when I was in high school, every weekend there was like two or three parties on one night. Like one address gets rolled by a cop, you go to the next one. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was that was the thing at high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, we and her used to like hook up here and there. And then that was during the transition of me like really being focused on video. Because yeah. remember in high school, mm -hmm. towards the end of high school, I was doing all the videos yeah, for Milliken yeah. and then I left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was very uh, anti-girlfriend. Mm. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was very, like, um, introverted. Like, I did the dance stuff. So I was like, an, I'm like an introvert extrovert. It's very strange. I love being yeah. alone and I can be alone all the time. Same, yeah. But I have strong suits in being an extrovert because that's also the other half of 50% of the other. Of, yeah. of what job. I'm doing. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. have to, like, learn to be like that. But anyway... Um, yeah, so we kind of naturally separated, you know, and I didn't see her for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, and then every so often she would kind of support me in what I'm doing. Just like mm -hmm. nothing like crazy. Cause she had, did have a, a man at the time, mm -hmm. but it was just like friendly support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like, she was always there and then randomly like we, she was no longer with her ex and we randomly rekindled dude. Crazy. And then COVID hit. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's that. That's that. You know? <laughs> no, because then, and then like, all right, I'll, I'll do the whole story. So we, uh, yeah, we started kind of like dating a little bit. And then, and like, this is a couple months, like two months before COVID. Yeah. So it yep. was like normal dates at that time. And then 
COVID hit and everything got locked down. And unfortunately, like she lost her job and um, she had an apartment on her own and it was really expensive. And so me and my family took the decision to help her out and she actually moved in with me. And I think that was the ultimate test of t- the test oh, of a relationship for sure. because if you can live with somebody and you can, uh, you know, grow in that way. And like I was living in the, the back, back part of my student of my parents' house, but like, it it's was a garage, garage session. So literally like this size. But it's not like okay, you you can't say it's a garage because it was a night. It wasn't. Well, like we like retrofitted it to be a little bit more like a house. Yeah, it was yes. dope as fuck. Thank you. I, I really like, took pride in that. No, yeah. it, was, uh, like, it wasn't just your old garage. Like, yeah, it, was it, it, it turned into like a little like studio, back oasis studio. studio. I had my editing yeah, desk in there. Dope. Like I had the whole thing in there. I did all the little product shoots out of there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so we we did that and like and that's it went really well. Dude. And I love both of you, but there was a lot of doubts. That was fast well, of as course, fuck, because dude. I mean that's but that's I think the beauty of our story. No, I no is for that sure, because 100%. we've known each other. It's not, it's fast, but not fast. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah because yeah, I've yeah. known her for a long time. I've known her throughout all of high school. So it's not like I'm getting to know the person from scratch. Yeah. You know and what I mean? also like, being in lockdown with a person, that's just 24 hours a day no, that's what with the, no. the same person. Yep. Awesome. And you don't yeah. go out. Yeah. You can't go to the movies. Time apart. You There's can't do zero nothing. Time apart. And, then, and then you guys were only like dating for like two was it like four months? Four or five months yeah, before and then that. We moved yeah. In together and we, like, I was like, damn, that's, okay. Yeah. Hey, my parents were about it too. <laughs> yeah, that was, they came into green light. I was like, hey, you want an, like another person to live with yeah. here? Like, they were like, yeah. <laughs> <"Cool."> <laughs> that was, <laughs> no, but that is the beautiful story. Yeah, that's the like, beautiful you know story. I mean? And I think, I think that for me, like, yes, there's everyone has like their moments of, oh, who am I doing? This is too much, it's too little, whatever. Of course. Uh, but we ended up leaving my parents' back house and we moved to. An apartment in uh, in Long Beach and Belmont Shore, mm-hmm. and uh, things kept progressing. You know, we were there for she when she's been through a lot these past two years. Um, she lost both of her grandparents, but mm-hmm. that's a whole nother thing. So I was a very, you know, I was there for a very tough time in her life. Mm-hmm. And I think if if you are with anyone and you go through something difficult. Course. You you learn more about each other and you get you go to, through the yeah, same you pain. Go through the, yeah, because you like, were with her. You go through things. Life isn't easy, mm. you know. Mm. Everyone's we're all going to go through trials and tribulations and mm-hmm. low moments and high moments, and it's how you navigate through the low moments to kind of really um, see how you react and how you are with each other. Exactly. And I think we discovered that really fast. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and like it was a no brainer. For sure. You know? For sure. I was like, you know what? Listen, she's been wanting to be <laughs> for oh, forever. I remember. You know, I was the one. I was like, hey, hold it down. Yeah. Slow it down. Slow it down. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked, and I'm, I'm like really stoked for this next chapter of my life. So congratulations, man. congratulations. Man. Yeah. Um, you're talking. I'll ask more. Another. I have two questions in mind, but one. Yeah. You're talking about low moments and stuff. Yeah. Obviously, during the relationship, but you personally, too. Like, when you're going through those low moments, like, how do you stay positive? Like, what is your, like, go-to thing to do? Or, like, how do you just stay in that path and keep it, keeping it positive? Good question. Um, so, when there's a sense of doubt, I think low moments for me is doubting myself. Mm. Because this can go a couple different ways. So, if you're, tooking, if you're talking video, right, mm-hmm. in terms of your craft, and you're going through a moment where you're, you're low and you're like, I suck, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone, you can feel like that. Definitely. I think uh, I th- it's learning to kind of step away for a second. Mm-hmm. I think I did that a few times and like having other outlets to kind of uh, get your mind off it, like dance. Mm-hmm. So a lot of my low moments were in tandem with dance. So every time I was really upset and not understanding how to edit this and being frustrated, I would go and not do it. And I would go dance for a while yeah. and then kind of do it now. But I think now that was back then. I'm trying to think how I kind of overcome them now. I think for me, I, I have so much pressure in terms of wanting to do so much. I put pressure on myself. Mm-hmm. Mm. I just do it, dude. <laughs> Even when I'm depressed about it, like, yeah. I just do it. I don't know how. I'm t- this is a good question because I'm thinking how my how I operate. Um, a lot of the times is I'll probably I do a lot of projects simultaneously. So yeah. if I'm stuck on a project, 
You go to the next one. I go to the next one. Mm -hmm. So if I'm editing two or three videos at the same time, I'll start in here until all the creative juice and the flow the flow state is done. And I'm like, all right, can't look at the video anymore. And I'll put it away and I'll start another project. Mm. And get excited about the project. Mm, you know, mm, a lot mm. of a lot of the things that I do too, tip for all you videographers, is I blast music when I'm rough cutting. And I get hype mm. of the cuts. Mm. So I'm preempting myself to get started with the edit. Well, a lot of people don't you know do I mean? our technique though. A lot of people don't know how to rough cut. What That's rough big too. Is. Yeah. So we can have a whole other podcast on video editing techniques. Yeah, for real. <laughs> so <laughs> part two on Luciano. But, yeah. but with that technique... Short story, rough yeah. cutting is you're going through all your footage and you yes. cut the best shots you have and blah, blah, blah. But blasting yes. music, that's how, yes. that's how it helps yeah. you. Yeah, like I will, so like you, you will shoot a, we'll shoot a video, right? And you'll shoot all this content. Sometimes you, most of the time you overshoot. So what happens normally is when you drop all the content on your timeline, it's overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> You've been around that road many times mm -hmm. where like the project doesn't get done because you just even even attack the... The rough cut. The rough cut because you're dealing with over 100, 200, 300 files. Yeah. You know, so from that point is if you can get over that hump of, all right, let's cut it down, cut it in half. I want all the bangers. That's when you start entering, oh, I love editing again. Mm. You know, like when you, you have to get past that initial crappy part of going through all this sh stuff. Mm. Yeah. And then you blast music, like. You just get pumped. Have a, yeah, you have pump. Have a good, like, also, like. Have a nice, like, office or studio. Work, work area. Work area. Yes. Like, be inspired to be in your space mm. is another big thing that kind of gets me past. And then, like, having dope people around you. If you're over the edit, if you're over, bring someone in to come look at it or talk to a, a homie. <laughs> That's why he always be calling Jack or me up. He's like, can you come over? Yeah, come to come look at the edit. Give me hype. Give me excited <laughs> yeah. about it. Tell yeah. me I'm good. So I, like, <laughs> <laughs> tell, <laughs> tell me I'm good, I'm good. please. <laughs> I feel like I suck right now. <laughs> but... That's natural. I think that that goes for everything, though. That's not just video. Mm. You know, sometimes you need a little confidence. It's good to bring up cool. your friends. Like, oh, yo, that looks dope. Even when they're, you know, it's not there yet. Give pos positive criticism. Yeah. And constructive. Start with a positive criticism. Get yeah. them excited. And then throw your little, like, tips or, like, what you think you could Cause take that's my I'm, opinion or not. You to know? me, that's really important in friendship. When people give me real criticism, then yeah. I know you're, like, you're my, you're my boy, you're my homie. Yeah. Because if you're just gonna, if you're just gonna jack me off and like be like, oh, this is amazing, blah blah blah, like then I'm like, okay, I know there's something wrong with it. Just tell me what it is. Yeah, you know, like so don't don't beat around the bush. Yeah, just exactly. Tell me straight. It's like t yeah. So that's how, for me. That's like an important thing. Is like if you can tell me straight up, then yeah. and that was a big thing. Like why I always like thank you. Is like with any edit I have, like I always ask you like, what's better? What's the shot I can do better? So it's always that you got to take. Criticism well. You do. I think and that's only going to make you better. Mm. Yeah. How, so. do you, how do you balance then with personal life stuff? How do you, how do you uh, balance that also with your work? Like how do you not like be too under, under and you're like, I don't even want to work and blah, blah, blah. Like do you do anything personal as in like you go, I don't know, for um, a walk, you go, I don't know. For me, for me, honestly, is I love my Super 73. I knew it. <laughs> you were like, she's Supra? Supra? No, I'm a Supra the car. Oh, imagine. Oh, I thought you said you had a Supra. I was so, like, what? <laughs> so for me currently, like when I'm, when I need to take a break and I need to force myself out of the room, um, I ride my electric bicycle, Super 73, if you know what that is. It's a fucking it's, sick. It's a sick. Bike. And like, I'll tell you a little story about Super 73, which is, I just talked to Steve about this the other day. So, you don't know super 73 look it up they're really dope rad like electric bicycles they kind of look like motorcycles yeah it's like fucking cafe sick. racer style kind of bikes but i was obsessed with those bikes for a long time but they're expensive and i was like oh i'm never gonna get one like oh i gotta work i gotta do like 10 videos and then, <laughs> I'll, get the, and then I'll get the bike <laughs> so i was on that path and the crazy part is i ended up getting the bike i got it in 2020 and i told myself I'm going to work for this company. And I did. I'm working for them right now. It's so great. <laughs> like, I think that's like, it's just awesome that I think that plays into manifestation. I said, I'm going to make, I'm going to make, a, I'm going to start working for this company. I love them so much. I want to like work for them. And 
and now I am. It's it's yeah. it's surreal. Like a lot of their 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 past marketing content that you'll see on their Instagram is a lot of stuff that that I did with Steve, and like I think that's so special that you're able to, if you want it, go get it, take it. Like tell yourself a lot of it's just telling yourself you can do it. Yeah. A lot of times, like even when on an edit, like I'm not I'm not the best editor. I'm not the best videographer. I'm not. It's relative to people, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your edits could be like, your edits are fucking <laughs> but like, wild. I have to, you have to convince yourself that mm -hmm. you're good all yeah. the time. Like be your own, be your own cheerleader, not to a point where you're egotistical mm. and have, yeah. you know, you have to be humble. Of don't course. be telling people you're f hot shit. Yeah. You're like, yeah, 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 tell yeah. yourself you're hot shit, but no one has got to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that's, exactly. that's, 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 that's big too. Self-confidence. Yeah. That's a big thing in, in anything. With talking with people, with doing your own work, is being self confident mm -hmm. and remaining silent. Let the work let the let the work, work make speak the noise. For itself. Yeah. 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 Manifestation, I wanna go back on that. That manifestation is I I experienced that with Coachella. Remember I wrote it down on my board like two years ago. Yep. And you gave me the opportunity to do it. Like what was what was one of the you said Super Seventy Three was for sure a manifestation. What was one of another, maybe the first thing you manifested that you were like, "Holy shit, it's happening." Um, honestly, moving out, and mm -hmm. like outside of video, like a com I think for me is I had a big fear younger on like how I'm gonna make this video thing a career. How am I gonna raise a family? Mm -hmm. Like that was my a big fear because I told you that I value that too. Yeah, but like. I'm like, I'm an artist. How am I going to make money from this? Yeah. Right? That's the big thing. Um, so when I was starting to accomplish the business side of video and I started seeing the numbers and I started, wow, like it's coming to fruition. That was a big moment for me. I was able to afford rent and like move out and like buy all the gear that I want, buy a Super 73. Like, I mean, those are all materialistic things. I'm not saying that that's what you need to aim for. But for me, it's, it was big because I didn't think I was going to be making this kind of money. Yeah. You didn't think you were going to be at that, that was point. Your concern. Yeah, that was my concern. Yeah. It's like, how am I going to make this a, a living? Because I obviously I'm passionate about it. Mm -hmm. Like, I love it. I, l I can make a video for free. It's not about that. It's about, oh, how am I going to make this a living? Mm. How am I going to raise a family with this? So when little s stepping stones started showing up, self-confidence and now i'm like yeah now i want to build the next big thing i want to be the i want to have the best production house in orange county la yeah. and like i want companies to come to, to to us yeah you know that's my next goal yeah but um yeah what was the first what was the first thing you learned about video that you still use today and what was the last thing you recently learned about editing filming that you use today um uh, first thing that I learned is story is king no matter how crazy the edit is like if you can tell a story in uh, 30 seconds tell a story in 15 seconds your ad is going to be that much better mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking in terms of the stuff that I'm making of now course, yeah, yeah, so yeah, if yeah. you tell a little story I think if you that's why I think the rough cut comes into play like if you can Beautiful. tell a mini story and then throw all the little saucy little effects on top and whatever you want to do that has carried me a long way mm -hmm. because I think I a lot of my work is just clean like I'm not a crazy VFX guy yeah I'm not a crazy like yeah. you know after effects guy yeah. you don't need but it sometimes you don't need it I think I mean most of the time we don't use it no um, and then the latest thing that I learned is being uh, efficient and organized I'm learning to be even more organized than I, I'm not the most organized person, <laughs> but like through the years, I've definitely like figured out a good flow, but yeah. I think I'm still learning that now and I'm becoming a lot more savvy with it and like organizing a team and managing other people. That's big on organization and communication because I'm not the best communicator sometimes either. Mm -hmm. So like, I think that right now is the constant learning lesson that I'm going through now is organization and uh, efficiency. Nice. Yeah. That's my guy right there. I'm ready for our... Uh, oh, I was going to say one more thing. Oh, you have one more? Yeah. Oh, my bad, bro. My bad, my Talking, bad. Man, we chilling. Oh, we got, we got a question in the back. Hey, 
Okay. Oh, I was just gonna say. So you're, so you you, now you're kind of managing me. Yes. You're managing Mr. Jack Dixon, my par- sure. my partner in crime when it comes to film. Yes. And then slowly with sl- sl- slithering little Brandon yes, in sir. the back. But like, when was that moment that you were like, okay, I want to be like a mentor, but also like create this company and and manage people as videographers because a lot of videographers that what your work that do your work don't want to do that like they want to go on tour they want to with artists they want to do other commercial jobs like yeah but you you're really adamant ad what am i trying to say <laughs> adamant about mm-hmm. like managing and like creating a team and stuff like when did that come into play honestly when i met you and jack mm-hmm. i think I mean, obviously, we come from a dance background, but when I met Jack, it straight it came from straight passion and interest, mm. and like, I remember myself like that too, and I think I value that because I love the moments where we're together on set or we're behind a computer screen. That moment right there, where we're laughing and we're coming up with stuff, is the stuff I most enjoy. I don't find joy in doing the biggest brand. I don't really find the satisfaction and like, oh, I just did a commercial for Nike. That's cool. Like, I will love that. Mm -hmm. But like, it's how you, it's the moments in that process that you're going to remember forever. It's not the the brand name. So for me, it's like, all right, if I just surround myself and give opportunity to everyone around me, those brands will come Mm -hmm. and I will have the satisfaction that, I'm growing something and we're going to be all having a great time together. Yeah. Like I value the, the, like I said, it's, I think it, it comes from the dance world. It's the, yeah. it's the community and the, and the essence of being together and like mm. going through it, you know, yeah. like that's mm-hmm. what I really like. Um, Cause a lot of videographers too want to keep those jobs for yourself. It's like, they, you know what I mean? They're gatekeepers. Yeah. So like, <laughs> these are mine. Yeah. Yeah. They don't yeah, touch yeah, my yeah, work, yeah. you know, like, and I think I'm like learning that that's not it, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like, that's not the way to go. No, like I, I rather give opportunity to people if I have the opportunity to give it. Mm. If yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like yeah, I can't cool. do every job that comes my way. Mm-hmm. So instead of saying, you know what, I'm not gonna give that to Dylan because he's gonna steal my client. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's like people think like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. But if I if we attack, if we think of it differently, like no, Dylan's part of my team. And we, if we talk good, if, if we all talk good about each other, why what's the harm? And we all work together. Dylan. Hop in there. I'm giving you a shot. Do it. Prove yourself. Because that's what I wanted, too, when I was starting out. Yeah. It's it's people gave me a shot. Kai gave me a shot. Jones Crow for, I did a lot of work for American Express. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jones Crow, for giving me a shot. Mm. You know, like, it's my turn. I'm going to give you a shot. I'm going to give you a shot. Do it. Take it. And, like, let's do this thing together. That's that's really what I value. I, I respect that big time. And I, I think it's for sure. I think that's why we always click so well is because we both come from the dance world and I'm just like that too. I mean, yeah. that's that's why it was really hard. Not hard, but it was really big decision on who's going to be part of the garage sessions. Obviously, I wanted you to be a part of it, but you're fucking busy all the time. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. But I, and then, But I knew I wanted still wanted you to have on as a guest and help me in any way. 100%. And, 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 and like... Uh, I appreciate you saying that, but, like, I think, like, podcast versus what I'm doing, like, we're all linked together still. It's not yeah, necessarily facts. the same thing. Like, we will possibly do a project in the near future. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't mm-hmm. matter to me. Like, we're all connected. Even if we're doing our separate entities, we're all 100%. coming back to one thing. 100%. Like, we're all like, going to support each other because mm-hmm. the community is smaller than you think. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone thinks it's so big. It is saturated, but, Very like, saturated. yeah. If you have a good crew and you're happy with your crew, it doesn't matter. All that becomes tunnel vision, man. So what's the what's the future looking like for Luciano? You told us a little behind camera. Oh yeah. To so what, what's the future holding? <laughs> what's the team looking like? How so we- future, where uh, Steve and I have finally decided to start our company, and uh, we're reeling it in. So. Dylan was saying we have a we have a smaller crew that shoots a lot of the BTS stuff and a lot of the music industry stuff, but now we're starting a new company. You're gonna hear it here first on the, yeah. on the podcast. I mean, I'm telling you, exclusive news. <laughs> the process is every no, we're week. saying this because this is this is holding me accountable for a deadline. 
<laughs> you have to do it. I'm going to tell people right now. I got to do it. When this drops, you're going to head over to CinnovateMedia.com. You're going to check out our website. We're officially launching uh, our own production company. Uh, moving forward, uh, like in pursuit of becoming an agency, but we focus on production and doing a lot of uh, commercial stuff, BTS stuff, and just actually bring it in-house under a brand rather than being solo artists. So uh, amazing! it's going to be cool. I think it, we're going to attack the industry like a company, mm -hmm. but still have that small rooted community of creators like you, Jack, Brandon, mm -hmm. Damien, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eve. When, where did the name come from? Oh, so we've been battling a name for a long time. It started off, I don't know, for all you OGs out there, it used to be Fifth Eye. Oh, my God. <laughs> I do remember. Fifth, Fifth Eye Productions. Eye. Uh, but uh, it didn't stick, and we weren't in that mindset, that pen. Mm -hmm. uh, Cinevate uh, originally comes from Cine, Cinevate, which means cinematic, and then Vate to create. So Cinevate, we mm -hmm. elevate, we create, we it's the power of elevating someone's brand or mm -hmm. company in a cinematic video way. Nice. Oh, right? yeah. So you're going to check the actual... Uh, the description. The descri the <laughs> Everything. <laughs> I don't take it word for word, but that's kind of the, the, the essence behind the name is cinematic approach on elevating your brand and, and, and create and uh, all those kind of... All the, all the eight words. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, what? and it'll be ready. Once this drops, people can see it? They can see it. Cool. So we'll, we'll have an Instagram. We'll have a TikTok. We'll have the whole nine yards. We'll link the website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, we'll have some collabs <laughs> in there with Garage Sessions. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be great. What's for Cinovate then? What is you and Steve, because you both are, like, going to be the, you know, the captains of the ship. Like, yep. what? what is, like, what do they call it? The long-term goals? Long-term goals? Is that what it's yeah. called? <laughs> I thought there was a different name for it. But, like, what's your, like, what's... One of the long-term goals that you have, like, what do you see Cinevate being? Uh, we want to have, like, five, five, ten-year goal. I'm going to say five years. Okay. Three to five. Ooh, I'm putting okay. it on it. Putting it I want to have our own warehouse. And I want to operate out of, like, a uh, like a hub. Yeah. Like, where we have oh. a psych wall. We have backdrops. We have editing bays. We have rental gear we have the whole nine yards lives within a space where we can all come together and create like i i i think we're in a we're in a we're in a moment where we are don't want to work for everybody all the time we want people to come to us mm. you know what i mean mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if we have a hub and where we can all meet and create make a podcast room all that kind of stuff is that's what the dream is i just want like i said it's community and maybe we'll have a dance studio in there yeah like i just want like the Innovate like a fantasy factory, Don't bro. Don't cap, bro. Like a fantasy factory, like I that is it. the goal, and like we're in that, in that, in that, uh, in that route, and then obviously having a couple of retainers with clients mm -hmm. that yeah. we have that uh, that our team can handle, nice. you know, and to generate money and to fund this fun fantasy factory type <laughs> of thing. That'd be lit. Creative Three, fire. factory. You heard right? it here first as well. That's Three fire. to five years. See where we at. We're gonna do it. Three to five years. Where, do where do you see yourself personally, work-wise, life-wise, in three to five years? Still or goals, or what do you, like, wish to happen? You know, um, you know, we can always wish. Yeah, you can always wish. I mean, I think uh, still breathing and uh, living <laughs> three to five <laughs> yeah. years. That's, that's a good goal. That's a that is a good goal. <laughs> that's, that's been my goal um, every year. Remaining happy. <laughs> uh, and um, I want to have... In three to five years, for sure, I think less than three to five years, I want to have the work-life balance figured out completely mm. and not overworking like I've been in the past 10 years and taking time to go out and do fun stuff too. I think balance is for me. That's yeah. my personal goal is I want extreme balance between everything and obviously bringing more opportunity to more creators like you, people who are an up-and-comers and giving yeah. opportunity to more videographers who are trying to take the, the next step in their career too so that's my goal i just want to give back i got I, I feel like so many people have given so much to me mm -hmm. and like i want i mean i'm not i'm not successful yet mm -hmm. you know like i want i'm not there yet but when i am there I best believe i'll be giving it back to the community is it kind of like so. that sense of re like responsibility a little bit like yeah like i think like i come back down to ricky kent uh, ricky again like i i like Ricky gave so much to me at 10 years old, 10 to now yeah. 26. Yeah. I saw the value in it and how much that shaped me as a person. Yeah. It's 
the foundation of who I am, I want to be that person too for other people. And I think that's why I, 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 I do that with you and Jack and course, all that kind of thing. And like, so for sure, give, give that opportunity. For so. sure. It's going to be fun. Man, you'll see us in three to five years. Garage Sessions will That's be in that Cinovate warehouse. <laughs> we'll be making movies. Like, we're yeah, going crazy. It's going to be fun. So, hopefully then, we'll have, like, a YouTube account. Yeah. No. Where I, I think a lot of it, too, is I'm going to, like, watch. I'm, like, setting myself up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you better you do, this, really do this, I really got to do it. Uh, but, yeah, I want to be uh, – I've been so – I, if you can tell, I don't know. I'm so um, reserved and uh, not public about my life at all. Like, first time on a podcast? First time. Yeah, like I don't really talk about myself. Everything, I don't. Yeah. Like even on my social media, I barely post. And if I do post, it's about work. Yeah. Same, yeah you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, and it's yeah. not, I haven't even been up to date on that. Mm-hmm. So I think kind of um, finding balance between how I want to communicate who I am online. I need to find how, what my voice is in the in the community. Yeah. I haven't done that yet. In the internet world, yeah. kind of. Like, I'm, so I just do my jobs, and I post, and talk to the people that I'm already in, in the circle with, but mm-hmm. I gotta branch out and uh, become more of a a personality. What were you gonna say? You saw on YouTube? You're trying to YouTube? I'm trying to start, like, something where we can, like, like a, like a YouTube account where we're all, like, like, showing the behind the scenes of how work gets outside done? of production, like, how yeah. work gets done. Teaching tutorials. Tutorials, that's, yeah. that'd be lit. I ten year goals. I not yeah, not even ten years, but I wanna, I wanna eventually have a course, that's an online oh, course. That's I think sick. that's another big thing that Cinebate wants to do. Mm, that'd be lit. So there's so much stuff. I don't want to drop everything on here because uh, you're all uh, gonna uh. hold me accountable for it. And I think you know. And we can't tell. Patch. We can't tell all the secrets, man. No, we, we can't, can't tell everybody everything. We can't so. tell everything. But, but I mean, you heard it here first, man. Thank you, Luciano, for coming on, man. This thank is, you so much. For I can't. You guys. I can't say it enough. My mentor. G- guy I look up to from day one brother right here appreciate you for everything hey man and um, you. thank you we have question we have question of the day let's hear it. versus games man let's go you bro. already know um go on the app go make your poll make some money and here's our question of the day man all right luciano would you rather live in real life the walking dead or or real, real life, life jurassic park Ooh. Well, both ways you're going to die. <laughs> hey, you don't know that. <laughs> but you don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I would say Jurassic Park because dinosaurs, bro. I mean, he's Walking so- Dead is cool and all. <laughs> but what if my, my friend turned on me and then it becomes an emotional thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it becomes like, an emotional roller coaster. Like, start like your, yeah, bro. Like your brother just starts turning on you. want to eat yeah, your face yeah. off. I'm good on that. I'll, I'll deal with the dinosaur. <laughs> You don't want that emotional baggage. <laughs> no, I don't want that, man. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's my answer. I'll, oh, that's I'll go not Jurassic a good Park. Point. What about you? That's, that's a good point, the emotional baggage. Yeah, but with the Jurassic Park, though, I can't fight against the dinosaur, my guy. You don't got to fight. I guess. I'm Facts. Like, that's <laughs> Huge. You got to run. <laughs> <laughs> you got to run. <laughs> You ain't gonna stand a chance against a dinosaur. We we talked uh, about this a little bit in like our really? head about zo- about zombies. Oh, about zombies. About, about I already know his end. This guy is well, a well, quitter. No, 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 it's gonna. This guy's a first. quitter. No, you go first. You go first. What's your answer? For me, I feel like I can handle the Walking Dead and like kill him because you know my dad is my dad, and sometimes he's trained me to be vi- violent when it's necessary. You know. I don't I know if like any sort of training can prepare you for zombies. Not training, <laughs> but, like, I don't know, mentally, mentally trained and, like, you know, like, prepared for that shit. Okay. I th- <clears throat> I think I'll do Walking Dead. Walking Dead? I'll do okay. Walking Dead. Who are you? So, either way, probably running towards whatever the problem is, right? <laughs> so, like, yeah. if it's a dinosaur, I'm going to scope out its foot. I'm going to run right under it. <laughs> this okay. guy's okay. just a okay. quitter. All right. This guy's okay. just a quitter, bro. <laughs> but <laughs> I talked about this in Arrowhead. You can convince me to fight against zombies. I could be convinced. Bro, easy. In this scenario, and I think was, I'll, I'll choose The Walking Dead. And like Luciano said, sometimes I like my alone time, and sometimes I'm not really a people person. There's not that many people alive, bro. Like, I don't <laughs> have to deal with drama. I mean, okay. You know what I now mean? Now that you guys like, were saying all these answers, part? what I feel now, <laughs> now, okay. I'm thinking about it more like, all right, if I did The Walking Dead, 
I kind of like the fact where I can build my own little fort. Yeah, and, like <laughs> you have your own empire. My whole little like world. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's kind of cool too. That's what I'm saying. And Liter- I was literally just yeah. gonna say. I was <laughs> literally just gonna. And say. And you only have exactly. to. You only have to deal with people that you like fuck with. You know, like. Yeah, that's facts. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, I choose Walking Dead. All right. Well, you, let's. Uh, you change your answer or you address? Oh, because it's my answer that. Has to, to be, the right? poll, yeah, yeah, hmm. yeah. What do I tell? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stick with Jurassic. Okay, okay. Jurassic. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Jurassic's still a good answer, you know, because you, I don't you, know. Either you don't, way, you don't have you don't have to deal with the emotional baggage when it's you know your dog too. Like, your dog, I like feel like some I, I am legend shit. I feel like the Jurassic Park one would be easier, not for us, but for eventually the dinosaurs to go away. Because I don't know, like, they how tough extinct. the skin of a dinosaur is, but I feel like weapons that we have. Oh, should if you're be able to take like care rep- of them. Oh, you're talking about like if the military gets yeah, involved right, and all that? Right, right, oh, right. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Like I think they could handle dinosaurs easier I than mean, zombies. That's the same with Walking Dead. Walking Dead wouldn't be Walking Dead if like I never saw the show, but do they acknowledge like why the government hasn't done anything about it? I don't Has remember. Has anyone seen it here? I haven't finished it. No. I'm like almost towards the end, but they didn't Oh, but that's but, but oh. only the, <laughs> only the park was <laughs> in charge like of that. Yeah. <laughs> like Dominion, that one, j- that one's where they like go into the yeah. city, right? Yeah, I haven't seen that one yet. So like, yeah. All right, well, we're yeah. sticking with our guns. We're sticking with our answers. If you uh, did Luciano's poll last week, you know the answer now. So, all right, Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park, it is. I'm gonna throw people. I bet you more people are gonna pick Walking Dead. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> but hey, but <laughs> 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 we got ya. And I said we got ya. All right, well th- that's the episode. Like I said, oh, if you're listening on Spotify, Apple, Apple Music, head to uh, YouTube, head to YouTube. Watch our look at our beautiful faces, man. Come on, we we get ready every week. Um, every week. But if you're listening, shout out your tags. Which, where can they find you? Uh, find me, uh, Instagram, TikTok, all this stuff. I think it's the same. So at Luciano underscore Picasso. It is, and it then is. you know, you and Cinevate will and be under Cinevate. him. And then Cinevate also uh, at Cinevate Media on Instagram. Nice. And You're then we already have the tags locked in. We already have the tags locked. Yeah. Locked. Uh, okay. Tags. It's just on. It's on standby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there it is. That's the episode. We'll see you next week for another. Be- I just spilled a fuck ton of water. <laughs> Come on, bro. You gotta keep it nice and clean. It's water. It's okay. It's okay. Um, but n- next episode, who we got yeah. next episode? I honestly don't know what comes out after this. Me they're either. All, I'm telling you, just, we've been... We have them all. I just forget the order yeah, they're coming and out. Yeah, man, like, so... We never say this... Okay, we've never say this either. Subscribe, like... Oh, that'd be cool if you guys... Yeah, 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 yeah if come you don't on. mind. We've been, work, <laughs> we've been working our asses off. Follow Garage Sessions. Come like them. Follow them. Come on, you already know the deal. We've been, we've been working our asses off behind the scenes, getting all these guests for you guys. Incredible guests, too. They ain't no low-ball guests, so... Make sure to subscribe, like. Oh, we have, we have the young Miss oh. Isabel next week coming through. She yeah. that was a banger episode. So stay tuned. We'll see you next week. Peace.